The heat, the humidity is sweltering. Sweltering heat today. There's been a heat warning. Heat warning has been issued by the health unit. 50 sensors, five cities, so many stories from a long, hot summer. Windsor, Ontario. Greg Walton was feeling extreme heat from day one. I've taken a shower. I'm already starting to wet my shirt. I'm sweating profusely. Vancouver, July 18th. Samantha Johnson was dreading the summer ahead. If I do too much, I just perspire. Or just It just pours off me because it's so warm. Everywhere we measured, there were similar stories. It was like almost um, 10 p.m. at night. The temperature at this time is 31. We found that temperatures inside were often far hotter than outside. Many people tend to think that if they remain indoors, they're safe. The problem is, is that indoor environments can get really hot. Ottawa professor Glenn Kenny studies the body's ability to lose heat. Looking at your data, there's no question that we have to be concerned. His research found people can generally handle indoor temperatures up to 26 Celsius. Your body has to try to lose more heat and your heart has to work harder to try and enhance that heat dissipation. So as you get above 26, it becomes more stressful on the body. CBC's analysis found half the homes in our test were above 26 degrees most of the time. Let's have a look at the data. You've been, yeah, above 28 degrees, um, even at nighttime. I sleep maybe two and a half hours, half an hour at a time. It's just too flippin' hot. 79-year-old Samantha Johnson feels she has nowhere to go, day or night. I have heart failure, so as soon as I do any type of movement, the sweat just pours off of me. And so I could go to the library and I could stay there until six or seven. And then I could come back to this and not sleep all night and then get up and go back to the library. Those politicians have got it all figured out, don't they? We also showed our findings to emergency doctor Aaron Orkin. The homes here are holding steady in the like 28, 29, uh, just shy of 30 degrees all the time uh, with almost no reprieve. Six weeks later, our sensors found that Greg Walton's apartment had the most stays over 26 degrees. Wow, like so it's like if it's 26 outside, it's like 33 degrees inside and I'm running fans and it's still that much hotter and it's still that much more humid and it's just like wow. But it has such a big difference on the quality of life and just the quality of experience that you're in when you're in your place. It's not safe and not, not good for your health to be in that kind of heat in an ongoing way period. That will be more dangerous for people who have other health conditions. But also it means that over time, people who are exposed to heat in an ongoing way will have shorter life expectancy. The heat became a life and death matter for 88-year-old Herman Gron, one of our participants who lived here in Surrey, BC. He was in and out of the hospital with breathing problems. Days after we last spoke to him, Herman passed away on August 14th of heart failure. That's a tragedy, and it's a tragedy at so many different levels. People home who are suffering from heat-related illness back into a home setting that simply cannot cool down. The idea that medications or other treatments will fix their health problems, their uh, respiratory disease, as this gentleman felt uh, and experienced, or their uh, there are other health problems that they'll be able to address those without getting the heat under control is equally absurd. Community advocate Marcia Bryan says now that the facts are in, it's time to act. Wow. <laughs> is this for real? To actually see the proof of it. Speaking is one thing, but when you actually see the proof of it, it's alarming. Hopefully with this will come something amazing out of it. Now that's alarming enough, but heat isn't the only hazard. CBC's investigative unit also tracked the humidity using precision sensors, just like this one. Leah Hendry breaks down the dangers when summer swelter knocks out your natural defenses. Last week in Montreal, a heat wave brought hot, humid days. But when the sun went down, there was still no relief. Eastern and Central Canada, you have the added effect of humidity, which can keep buildings hot well into the night. 
It is currently 28.5 degrees in my apartment. We spoke to three of our 50 heat monitor volunteers about what the data said about that humidity effect. First up, Leah Raymond Marshall. It's roasting in her newly built student co-op that doesn't include air conditioning. As soon as you start trying to get to sleep, you can feel how hot you are. She says she could buy an AC unit, but it would block the access to her balcony. During last week's heat wave, the inside humidity was nearly 70%. It's like, you know when you open the oven and you get the like burst of hot air? It feels like that, but all the time. Um, I'm hyper aware of how much I'm sweating right now. So this is our environmental chamber. Researcher Danielle Gagnon has studied the added effect of humidity physiologically on the body. Our main defense mechanism to stay cool is to sweat. And what really cools us off is the evaporation of sweat. The more humid it is in the air, the harder it is for that process to occur. So we might still produce sweat, but instead of it evaporating, it'll drip off onto the floor and then we lose all of its cooling power. What ends up happening inside of our body when we're not able to cool off? Our internal body temperature will increase more for a given environment. Um, that can obviously lead to dangerous things if, if body temperature increases to very high levels. There, it's good. Bernadette Mamo lives with her 86-year-old mother in Toronto. Both of them have high blood pressure. We got the doctor's appointment on Friday. We can get out of this heat. They tried installing an air conditioner, but it blew the fuses in the old building her mother's been renting for more than 50 years. I worry about her getting heat stroke, even though she's not outside. The CBC heat monitors show that with the humidity, the evening temperature inside felt as high as 31 degrees. How does that make Mamo feel? Ugh. Maddening, aggravating. We're paying rent. I'd like to be able to stay in my home comfortably. But it's like we can't. In Raymond Marshall's apartment, with the humidity, it got up to 34 degrees. And that's not all. When we looked at the data, it was 10 degrees hotter in here at some point than it was outside. Okay. Meaning that it was 10 degrees cooler outside. Really? <gasps> I should, maybe I should start sleeping outside. <laughs> it's surprising too because you said your building was built in 2020. You know, when you make a building in Montreal, you think about how the, the cold is going to affect. Well, we should start thinking about how the heat is going to affect us. New buildings need to be designed so that they don't uh, store heat uh, in the summer. Dr. David Kaiser says the city's daytime cooling centers don't help people at night when the risk is the highest. If we want to be realistic and we're thinking about uh, reducing that risk at night, then it really comes down to uh, building, housing, um, and uh, urban planning. Finally, when humidity was factored in, we clocked the apartment that felt the hottest of all in our project, and it belongs to... Hi, how are you doing? How are you? MBA student Sridharan Van Kiparam. The humidity in your apartment was 70% one day in July, at the beginning oh, of July. Okay. And you actually, your apartment here reached the highest temperature of any of the other sensors that oh, we have okay. in Canada. It reached a temperature of feeling like about 39 degrees in here. That's pretty high. <laughs> what do you think about that? It's, it's really surprising, but then yeah, it's, it's really loud. I'm surprised I got through this. Now that Ben Kiprem has graduated, he's looking for a new apartment. For his quality of life, something with shade or better yet air conditioning will be a priority. <laughs>